Okay, so when we're thinking about allocation, we need to first think about how plants work. And so plants are really integrated systems. There are a lot of things that happen within plants that despite not moving like animals, they do a lot to coordinate all of their physiological functions and how they use the things they create. So the key process that everyone's taught about plants is photosynthesis, which is how they create their energy. So they use water and take it up from the roots and carbon dioxide from the air. They take it in via the stomata, the holes on the leaves and light energy to create carbohydrates and oxygen as a byproduct. Now those carbohydrates, when we add nutrients form the building blocks of everything for these plants. Uh, so we can make bigger uh, carbohydrate molecules. We can make our proteins, our lipids, nucleic acids. Um, so these are all the building blocks of the cell and all the basic fundamental macromolecules. And plants can use these to go into so many different uses. So plants often have symbionts or organisms that they exchange goods with in the soil. Uh, they have to breathe and they need to use energy. There's a defense aspect where the plants have to defend themselves um, against um, attackers. Uh, growth, where uh, they need to, uh, to grow and to continue building on themselves. Uh, it takes energy and you have to build structures. Uh, there's also storage. So plants, this is actually part of what I study with my PhD is plants actually store a lot of resources. And whether this is an active or passive process is a key question of mine um, and how that influences abiotic stress tolerance, like how well they can handle drought or heat waves um, is what I study. And then there's also reproduction. Um, so they need it to make their cones and flowers and then just to maintain themselves, just if they get attacked and need to rebuild, if there are certain metabolic functions, um, all this maintenance activity. So carbohydrates and photosynthetic processes really do uh, set the stage for all of these different things to happen in plants. And so how plants budget for where, how, where and how much of their carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids, where they go and how they decide that happens is a really critical question. So when we think about what resources are available to a plant, this actually helps the plant decide where they're going to allocate the resources. So plants have to take up light um, from the uh, sky via their leaves. We need carbon dioxide for photosynthesis and that also comes into the uh, leaves via the stomata, uh, little holes on the leaves. So often the stomata are on the underside or upper side of the plant, of the leaf. Roots are taken up through the, uh, water is taking up through the roots. Uh, this is a passive process. So water moves from concentrations of high to low. And so what we see is that the plant needs to maintain a gradient of dryness within itself for water to actually flow. So the roots are pretty moist. Uh, and so the soil is pretty wet. The water moves from the soil into the roots. And then once it's in the root, the roots are wetter than the stem. The stem is wetter than the leaves. And the leaves are actually quite more saturated than the air. So the air is extremely dry. And so what happens is the little holes on the leaves, they lose water. And what you can think of it is as, as an actual chain, like a chain link fence, pulling water up through the soil, uh, through the soil, up through the roots, up through the stem, into the leaf, and then out into the air. And this is part of, um, in a lot of chemistry classes in high school, you'll often learn about, um, ab let's see, absorption um, and their ability cohesion to absorb, uh, add cohes, cohesive, what's the word for that? 
cohere. That's the word for that. Um, <laughs> to stick together. Um, so the water moves passively in the plants. It's not like a heart. They don't have something to pump it. And then we have the micronutrients and nutrients in the plant. So the big three are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, NPK. And then several other micronutrients, uh, which plants also get from the soil. So based on the amount of resources available to the plant, they actually allocate how they grow. So if this is an example here, we're gonna call this a normal healthy plant. <clears throat> um, it's got a balanced allocation between the uh, below ground and above ground tissues in that the shoot, so the above ground pieces aren't too big. If it's too big above ground, you're gonna be losing a lot of water. Um, and so if you're not taking up enough water, then you won't have uh, you won't be able to sustain yourself. On the other hand, um, they're also taking up enough nutrients to sustain the plant and the above ground tissues are big enough to make enough carbohydrates via photosynthesis to continue supplying carbohydrates to the roots. So think of this normal healthy plant as balanced. This is just in a world where there's no problems, this is what the plant becomes. So now we're gonna put it in a condition where we've removed water. It's a little drier. And so what's gonna happen here is the plant's gonna allocate towards that limiting resource. And so water is taken up through the roots. And so what that plant might do is allocate more towards their root growth so that they can take up more water. And so what we actually might see here um, is a shift in what part becomes dominant. And so there may be a lot more roots, but that's gonna come at the cost of the above ground tissue. And so they're gonna grow smaller leaves and less stems. Similarly, a shade plant. So if we keep a plant in the light or in the shade, this is one of the well, most well-documented um, examples of changes in plasticity in plants. If it's shady, the plant wants to get enough light um, to do photosynthesis. And so the leaves need to be bigger. Um, but if they're thick, if they're really big leaves, you're gonna lose a lot of water. You're gonna lose, I mean, if you get eaten, you lose a ton of resources. And so what a shade plant often does is grows these huge leaves that are really, really thin. Um, and so if they lose a leaf, fine, but that leaf is gonna be huge so that it can catch all the uh, light that just kind of passes through. So often I would think of this as like a um, maybe a plant under the forest canopy. Um, there's just not a light, lot of light that comes through the top. Um, and so those plants are often adapted to lower light environments and may have bigger leaves or may have um, adapted their photosynthetic systems to deal with lower light. So at its core though, is that plants are gonna allocate these resources towards the tissues responsible for taking up that limited resource. So if it's droughted, they're gonna allocate towards roots to take up water. If there's less light, we're gonna to allocate towards leaves so we can take in more light and so on and so on. We can talk about any number of variables and how it might influence this. Um, there are ways for us to study this balance called the root to shoot ratio. We can talk about that more, but for most of these projects, um, we're just gonna do a simple biomass measurement. So when you're considering this, there's three tissues. Um, that I want you to consider uh, the above ground tissues, the stem and the leaves, and then the below ground tissues, the roots. So you could, depending on your project, we can measure just the above ground tissues. Like we can leave the leaves on the stem and just measure them together. And then you measure the roots, or we can measure the stem 
the leaves and the roots all separately. This is something uh, that will depend on the project and what you're interested in. So we should chat about that if, uh, if this is your measurement. So the way to do this is for each individual plant that you're gonna have, because you need to measure it at an individual level, you wanna dissect in the, into the tissues you're gonna measure. So if you're gonna measure uh, stem and leaves combined, just cut the stem away from the roots and weigh it once it's dry. Um, for the roots, we're gonna need to clean the roots of the soil. So typically what I suggest is just like a bucket of water um, and we submerge the roots in it um, and you just gently uh, hold the roots in your hands and just kind of massage the soil off. Um, it's gonna feel really odd um, and kind of grainy often, but basically all you're doing is just making sure that there's not soil particles on the roots so that when you weigh them, you're not weighing soil because you wanna weigh just the roots. Um, so after you've cut the tissues up and we've washed the roots clean of soil, we need to store them and dry them. And so this is a critical part. You wanna make sure we're storing individuals. So um, each plant gets one bag that has the roots, one bag that has the stems and one bag that has the leaves or an envelope. Typically you can dry them in I've seen envelopes, brown lunch bags, whatever. It just needs to be something that's dry, that's uh, not gonna melt in the oven. Um, so we're gonna put these envelopes or brown bags. Um, in the past, we've used the Fisher Scientific Isotemp oven at CBGS. Um, you wanna put them in there for around 48 hours um, at around 60, 60 degrees Celsius. Um, this is just the published temperatures that we've been using for years. Um, and it makes sure that nothing combusts, um, nothing's gonna like burn on the plant tissues, but you're also gonna remove all of the water. And then once they've dried for at least 48 hours, typically you can leave them, I mean, you could leave them in there weeks if you want in the oven. Um, it just needs to be at least 48 hours. Um, once they're dry, you weigh them, and make sure you weigh them separately and individually. So weigh your roots from one plant, weigh your stem from one plant, and then weigh your leaves from a plant. So this is uh, an example of this. So each one of these are just an envelope. I just made two little plants. Uh, so when you're labeling your envelope, you'd wanna make sure you remember your group, your plant number, and your tissue. Um, and then you'll need separate envelopes for plant number two from whatever group, and then all of their tissues as well. So that's it. And that is allocation and biomass.